what you're talking about. Your pain for, uh, for my gain, I... You can't deny that the minute you saw my black eye, you ran right out and told Lizzie all about it. No, you're wrong. I did, I did not... You came to me and told me that you said Ben had did this. Now, are you calling Lizzie a liar? No, but it didn't happen that way. Lizzie came in when I was telling Ben that... that oh, how convenient. When I... Shut up. When I was telling Ben that his affair with you was none of my business, and unlike him, I wasn't going to tell Lizzie about it, but I wanted to make it perfectly clear that if he ever laid a hand on Lizzie, the way he did to you, Wait, the he... way that he did to you, that I would kill him. And that's when Lizzie came in and overheard. Well, that's a very nice story, John Reed, but I never said that Ben did this. You had a date with him last night. You did tell me that, didn't you? Yes, I know, but I didn't say that he gave me a black eye. You came waltzing into headquarters out of nowhere with sunglasses on, covering up your black eye, acting like nothing happened, and, and you're supposed to, and I'm supposed to believe that you, that you got mugged in a subway? John Reed, the point is, and for some reason you keep ignoring it, is that I never said that Ben gave me a black eye. And now the entire world seems to think that he did, including your mother. Why are you protecting this guy, Nancy Ellen? Maybe you just want to believe that Ben did it because it looks so good for Lizzie. Nancy Dawn, do you consider me a good friend? Have I been a friend? Yes, yeah, sometimes. It's been hospitable at times. Okay. Maybe you'll consider what I'm about to do an act of friendship. What? I want you to call this guy. He's a friend. He's a very nice man. He's a friend of Uncle Pat's. Okay. He's a doctor. I don't need a doctor. He's a psychiatrist. You saying I'm crazy? No, I'm Honey, not. there's nothing wrong with me. I'm today. not saying that you're crazy. All I'm saying is that if you're protecting Ben... There you he... go again. You can't get him off your brain, can you? All I'm saying is that you're following a pattern. A pattern that a lot of abused women follow. And you should just talk to this guy. He's very nice. You know, John Reed, this is none of your business. And you better look, stop talking about this abuse stuff. You know, I'd have never walked out my door and, and thought your distracting company if I'd have known that a little black eye was going to cause such a ruckus. Please, will you just... And you've got to lay off talking about Ben and me. Now listen, John Reed. You and me are going to stay friends, which I certainly do hope is the case. Then you've got to put this little imagination of yours to rest. If you keep talking like this, there's going to be a lot of trouble. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, yes. So then do we have a deal? Sure. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now, I do think I need to get my beauty rest, okay? Okay. So I'm going to be going, and I will see you tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Can you take a explanation necessary. Matter of fact, I was wide awake. Matter of fact, I was just working on Sherry's deposition. Well, I hope I didn't wake up your baby. Are you kidding? Frank and the baby have been conked out for the last hour. So how about something hot to drink? Coffee, tea, hot cocoa? Oh, no, no thanks. Nothing? Um, look, I feel terrible about barging in on the day when you and Frank had so much trouble. Oh, yeah, this was the day. The Ryan family laundry washed out in public. Well, the way it goes. Come on, sit down. So, why don't you uh, tell me what's got you so frightened? Well, um, I was home. I think it's the first time I've been there alone since Richard died, and I don't know, I just kept staring at the floor where he... Everything was so lifeless, so still. Richard wasn't anything like that. I mean, he was very dynamic. He was always moving. He swept us all along with his energy. Anyway, I thought about my gun, and suddenly it dawned on me that I could be in prison for the rest of my life. Jill, please don't let that happen. I am innocent. I did not kill him. And I know that. You've got to trust me that I know that, but you've got to start thinking positive thoughts. Forget about this prison stuff. And I think you shouldn't stay at that apartment any longer. Not for a while. 
Well, I thought about that before I went over to Jack's, but that's really not fair because he needs to work and there's Zena. And I don't know, I feel like a proverbial albatross. Oh, come on, you know Jack doesn't feel that way. Things are never what they seem to be, are they? <laughs> Would you please explain that to me? Oh, um, I was <clears throat> just thinking about Sherry and Richard and their marriage. Mm. Certainly isn't anything like Richard described it to be. What are you saying? That she paints a different picture? A totally different picture. <laughs> she's not exactly acting true to form, either. I mean, she's not hysterical, and she's not particularly possessive or vindictive. As a matter of fact, for a woman who just lost her husband and then found out that I had been having an affair with him for the last eight years, I'd say she's been acting remarkably decent. He even offered to help me. <laughs> yeah, well, her kind of help we don't want. And as for decent, I'd say we have to question her motivation. Jill, hmm. she told me that Richard used to send her yellow roses. When I visited her, her entire suite was filled with yellow roses. And that's the flower that he shared with you? Uh-huh. <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I know, I know how painful this is for you. That's not the point. I just cannot believe that Richard lied to me like that. I mean, take Prince Edward Island, for instance. We went there all the time. We explored every rock, every cave. Now, I am sure that we discovered these things for the first time. Wait a minute. Is she saying that these were the same haunts that they had? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Interesting. Very interesting. 